Guys, what is going on? Tasty Mond. There's been a lot of talk over the internet the past day and previous months actually about Xbox possibly leaving the console marketplace and I kind of wanted to give my opinions about it actually since I've been somebody who bought the original Xbox since back in the day. I've had the first one, I had the Xbox 360, I've had Xbox One, I've basically had every single console that Microsoft has made. So to call myself an Xbox supporter I think is fair to say. I've supported Microsoft for a long time and I think it's alright for me to give my opinion on if I think them leaving the game in marketplace is a good idea. Now to just put in some context though, I am primarily a PC gamer these days. I'm long past the days where I was a console only gamer. I much prefer playing on PC these days and I buy every console just for the exclusives that come out. Long gone are the days of the Xbox 360 generation unfortunately though. I'm sure we've all got fond memories of that generation. It was genuinely a great console, the Xbox 360, and absolutely demolished the PS3 back then. So much so, like Sony were struggling to sell PS3s back then. Cost far too much money, and the Xbox 360 was just much better priced. And the amount of online that it had and showed us, the Xbox Live system, it truly done great things for gaming. Back in 2013, however, with the reveal of the Xbox One, I'm not going to go too far into it, but basically Microsoft signed their own death warrant with that machine, nobody really bought it, it had too much DRM going on, and gaming as a whole, the Gamers United, voted with their wallets, nobody was happy. Nobody was happy with what Microsoft were doing, and it was too much for them to go back and try and fix it. They tried their best, they removed the DRM, but everyone had just had enough by that point, and people bought the PS4 and since then because gaming has got even more popular since the 360 generation I want to say the PS4 and Xbox One generation might have been even more important because Microsoft were never able to really claw their way back from the mistake that they made with the Xbox One and PlayStation and Sony kind of flourished through that generation and here we are now in this generation where Microsoft have done the Game Pass system which is currently at 33 million subscribers and I never even knew it was that many that is absolutely crazy enough Numbers. nobody can say anything like that as a failure it's absolutely outstanding and I'm not even subscribed to it right now but I have been a couple of times in the past just to try a couple of games out but uh, they actually forced Sony to do their PlayStation Plus premium subscription they've even kind of like made Nintendo change their plans a little bit with a Nintendo subscription I was honestly hoping Nintendo wouldn't follow suit but they kind of have I guess we have Microsoft to thank for that because the amount of money they're making on the subscriptions is absolutely crazy so with the recent rumours of Microsoft leaving the console marketplace, it makes you wonder, is it true? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Microsoft are actually going to leave the console marketplace. I think they'll always still make consoles. The bigger question is, is there going to be any point to having the consoles, especially if they actually are going to be bringing out their games on PC and PlayStation and maybe even Nintendo consoles of the future? If they're actually going to do that, because they've already got PC down, we're just kind of like waiting on them getting their games on Sony's machines and Nintendo's, which I think is actually going to happen. So it makes you wonder, is there a point in buying the consoles going forward if that is happening? Because a lot of people argue there's no real reason in having an Xbox now because you can already have all the games on PC. Absolutely true, and I'm in that boat as well. I kind of think like that. I still have my Xbox here, but one of the only things I use the Xbox for is actually the old Xbox backwards compatibility program. I don't know if you remember that. They unfortunately ended that and I thought it was one of the best things about Microsoft but they were absolutely making no money from just giving you free remasters of the games unfortunately which is a real bummer. I absolutely love playing the old Xbox One games and Xbox 360 games on the Series X that I've never been given PC ports. I do think it's a little bit unfair when people just blatantly bring up that Xbox has absolutely no games on it or anything, like, oh, it should die because there's no games on, on the machines. But that's mostly just PS5 players saying that. And believe it or not, console wars are still alive and well, which I genuinely thought wasn't as bad as what I've seen people say on the internet. I really don't pay attention to it that much anymore. But console wars are still alive. Uh, one thing that gets me, though, is... Microsoft have absolutely loads of IPs. Conquer's Bad Fur Day to name some, games like Perfect Dark, obviously they have Halo and Gears of War which they always market, games like Crackdown, Battletoads, 
another killer instinct needs to happen. We've been waiting on Fable, the next Fable game, for how long? The problem is, Microsoft have just not been doing sequels over the years to make people care about these IPs, when they actually do have some pretty legendary IPs under their belt. It's actually not just Halo and Gears of War, contrary to popular belief. The reality is as well is that PlayStation Sony also don't have that many games if you're somebody like me, who mostly games on PC. Last year I bought one game for my PS5 I think it was and that was Final Fantasy 16 and I didn't even necessarily like it. The year before that I bought God of War Ragnarok and I thought that game was outstanding. It's like, is that worth a console though? Over the past two years I've bought like one game that I genuinely found great because I'm multi-platform on my PC. So that's what I mean, I just think it's a wee bit unfair that people say, oh, you know, Microsoft don't have any IPs or games when it's actually the exact same for PlayStation. It's just that the people saying that don't game on PC and they only game on a PS5, so they buy all their multi-platform games on that machine. There's also the situation of console exclusive games, which I genuinely think have hurt Microsoft this generation and last generation. I mean, you still cannot buy Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 on an Xbox machine. Why? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because there was rumours that Square Enix were going to get bought up by Sony at one point, but that's still not happened. So I don't think there's any reason not to be bringing out the games on their machine. It just hurts the IPs as well, in a way, because Final Fantasy was always a multi-platform IP. Sure, it had a lot of life on PlayStation, but it also had a lot of life on Nintendo before PlayStation, so it's not a Sony IP. It never was, and still isn't. So, like, why is it not on... Xbox Series X or Series S. I just don't understand. There's also games like Silent Hill 2 Remake coming out that Sony have once again paid for to keep on their machine. So I think the console exclusivity gives a bit of an illusion that Sony also have a lot of games on their machine, when in reality they're just paying the companies to keep the games on their machine for a certain amount of time before it can even go on Xbox, which is which is hurting Xbox. And I think that's probably why they decided to go down the path of maybe looking into buying Activision Blizzard, which is what happened, so they got all those IPs under their belt. At the end of the day though, I do think that Microsoft could have done a lot more things with the IPs that they never went out of their way to market or make any games for a game like Conquer and the Banjo-Kazooie's and all these IPs that they've had throughout the years. I mean, they bought Rare back in the day for a reason, but it genuinely felt like they never even done anything with Rare's IPs apart from a couple of games here and there. That is true. We can blame Microsoft for things like that. But is it a good thing if they leave the console hardware business? I don't think they're going to. I think there'll always be some form of Xbox to buy, and if I was being brutally honest, the way I see gaming going in, in the future is I do think that Game Pass will just be available on... I don't even think you'll need a console one day, guys. Uh, I, I know, like, cloud gaming right now feels like it'll never really work out, but one day it will work out. One day you'll just be able to turn on a TV or something or open up an app and play all these games without the need of any console at all. And it'll honestly be that simple for a lot of people and it'll be very playable. It'll actually be as perfect as it is playing on a console. But right now, having one less machine to buy I think is great for every single gamer. There's no reason not to buy a PlayStation or a Nintendo platform if all of Xbox's IPs and games of the future are going to be available on it and on PC. There's just like no reason to actually have the Xbox machine. I don't think it's like the death of Xbox or anything. I think it's Xbox just doing what I think is best for them as a whole. And maybe at this rate we'll get even more IPs from them in the future, you know? Let me know what you guys think when I'll catch you in the next one, eh?